Finance Committee will come to order. This morning, the Finance Committee gathers to discuss how to update and strengthen Social Security disability programs. Our objective is to make it easier to work for Americans who have a severe disability and want to work again. When I talk to those with disabilities, they constantly say they want to contribute to their communities and they want to work in the private sector. But the laws that are on the books today when it comes to work and Social Security are a bureaucratic, suffocating, mindless straitjacket that makes it almost impossible to work while maintaining eligibility for benefits. <clears throat> so I'm especially pleased to be able to say that here on the Finance Committee, this has been a bipartisan cause. And I'd like to recognize Senators Brown, Casey, and Cassidy in particular, those three, for a very, very strong bipartisan effort to cut through all of this Byzantine red tape. They want to, on a bipartisan basis, help Americans who count on Social Security. There is a bedrock principle here, and that is Social Security is to provide Americans with financial security and dignity, and that it's an earned benefit, something they contribute to out of each paycheck. But for too many, especially those with a disability, dignity has fallen by the wayside because of these barriers when they're attempting to work. The vast majority of those who receive disability benefits have worked at least 10 years, 10 long years, paying into Social Security with each paycheck. Becoming severely disabled due to illness or accident is a devastating blow. <clears throat> Fortunately, Social Security is there to help those Americans get back on their feet. It often takes months or even years to demonstrate to Social Security that their disability prevents them per from performing a regular job. In spite of that, so many Americans want a chance to go to work, even in a limited capacity. They want to be part of their community. Unfortunately, the rules that Social Security make working with a disability almost the equivalent of running a marathon. Many of those who try to work get an overpayment from Social Security due to these outdated rules. An overpayment is something where they still have to deal with, but these are earned benefits, and they're going to essentials like groceries, gas, and rent. Once Social Security realizes there's been a mistake, it often demands all of the money back, and they demand it quickly and in full. These overpayment fines can run in the tens of thousands of dollars, and too many Americans simply can't afford to pay. So something has to change, and what needs to change is to make it easier to work for those who want to work. I'm going to outline several ideas about how Social Security and Congress can help Americans do that, and in particular, so that Americans with disability can work without risking their eligibility for benefits and removing the red tape that holds them uh, back. The first bill is modernizing the Supplemental Security Income Program, what's known as SSI. Here again, a bipartisan effort. Senators Brown, Casey, Cassidy, and Lankford, both sides of this dais, I would say to our guests and people who are following this, Democrats and Republicans leading the way, saying that Americans who receive SSI and are living on shoestring budgets with the average benefit only accounting, amounting to roughly $700 a month, those folks deserve a fair shake, and that means the program putting in place a meaningful update, the first one in 40 years. As a result, it's become harder and harder to keep benefits or engage in meaningful work due to artificially low income limits that haven't kept up with inflation. The most an American with SSI can have in their bank account is $2,000. That has been frozen since 1989. Today, that would be about $10,000. For SSI beneficiaries who attempt to work, benefits are reduced by $1 for every $2 they earn above $85 per month. That amounts to a 50% income tax rate. That's higher than the highest rate in the tax code. 
Put your arms around that. Highest rate in the tax code. So it's time to bring these rules, heaven forbid, into the 21st century. And I'm glad to be able to join Senator Brown and Cassidy, Casey, and Lankford and several of our other colleagues to take the first step to bring the SSI into the 21st century with the uh, savings penalty elimination feature. Next is our Bipartisan Work Without Worry Act. I introduced with this with Senator Cassidy. The idea is direct. For Americans with lifelong disabilities like Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or an intellectual disability, there ought to be additional protections allowing them to work without risking Social Security. So our bill removes the risk of past earnings disqualifying an individual in this situation from receiving disability benefits based on their parents' work history. This ought to be a no-brainer, folks. It's a chance to have a life change for thousands of Americans who want to participate in the workforce but don't out of fear that federal rules could hurt their ability to be financially secure down the road. The last is overpayments. Over the past year, this committee has heard horror stories every day uh, about Americans getting huge overpayments for overpayment bills from Social Security. Often that's because the program's tremendous complexity or a mistake made by the agency caused the problem. When Commissioner Martin O'Malley came before the Finance uh, Committee, he pledged to take action to address the severity of these overpayment clawbacks. This spring, he took an important first step that was to give Americans more time and flexibility to correct these payment errors and put in motion a critical update to how payroll data is processed by the agency. That was something that the Finance Committee championed to help reduce overpayments in the future. We'll have additional steps that we're looking at that reduce the frequency of the overpayments happening in the first place. And I want everybody to understand we'll have more to say about that in the weeks ahead. So these are some of the steps the committee is exploring to improve Social Security. Each member of the committee knows the importance of work. And we understand as well the Social Security program's lifeline benefits. So we look forward to hearing from our witnesses, all of whom have expertise in the field, because they're going to help us knock down the barriers to work and modernize Social Security for every American. It's about time. And I thank our guest, Senator Crapo.